Okay, so this solo I had a lot of fun playing, and I hope you enjoyed it. I was really playing just completely off the top of my head. However, in jazz, when we say we're playing off the top of our heads, we're still mixing some of the great ideas that we were trying to develop in each of the first two solos that you heard before me just playing here. So, for instance, one of the things that I had was I had, um, I have an E7 arpeggio that I was using, an E7 flat 9. So the arpeggio is something like this. But what I did here, because I'm at an advanced level now when I'm playing, and I um, hope this will be something that you enjoy doing, is I was adding some of the chromatic notes in between and down on the A minor chord. And then it, later in the song, I went up. And this gives the feeling of a whole chromatic scale. Yet, I was still articulating the E7 arpeggio because my starting notes and my ending notes were all off of that arpeggio. So this is kind of a cool idea, and it's well worth looking at. You know, one of the tricks to advance soloing is starting to add more chromaticism to your lines. So... <laughs> There was another example of an E7 arpeggio using some of that chromaticism. So this is really a cool thing to add, and I hope that everyone will start working on this. Um, also, if you want more help with working on these arpeggio ideas, because they exist all up and down the neck on the guitar, you should pick up my arpeggio study book on Mel Bay. And uh, also, you can get uh, The Jazz Anatomy, my first CD-ROM with True Fire, which goes into depth in some of these ideas. So um, I hope this will all be helpful for you. Okay, so some other cool ideas you can do, and again, work on this chromaticism because it's so much fun, and there's a, there's a lot of cool lines you can get. Um, I, had, I thought of one more thing I'd like to add about chromaticism up here. For instance, here I was working off of this E7 area. area. If we go up to the 12th fret, here's another E7 arpeggio, and listen to what adding some chromaticism, which I did in this solo, sounds like. So you can hear all those notes. Here are all those chromatic notes added, and that's really a cool thing. Really fleshes out the sound of what you're doing. Another idea that's really cool, and it's a very common jazz substitution idea, is to use, instead of the chord that you're on, use the chord a flatted fifth away and play that arpeggio. This is called the tritone substitution. So, for instance, for an A7, when we, every time we came to the A7 in my performance here, you could do, and I did it on a number of occasions, an E flat 7. So you get this you get this kind of tritone sound. So instead of the arpeggio being, here's the A7 chord, you've got, you've got actually playing an E flat seven, and that gives you some really cool ideas. Another thing that's so important, and again, um, I recommend that you get my Jazz Anatomy CD-ROM because I talk a lot about the blues. Um, when you're, any song that you're playing, it never sounds bad to sound, play the blues. It always sounds great to play the blues. So, uh, you'll notice that a number of times when I'm coming home, when I have the 2-5-1 leading to the C major, I'm going to play a blues scale. So, anytime, the rule is, anytime you're coming up to a C chord, a major, or a dominant chord, and in this case, in this song, it was a major chord, go ahead and play a blues line. <laughs> And the trick is, just resolve it. And when I say resolve it, you have to resolve to the major third of the chord. Actually, you don't have to. You can, you can do different things, but that's a common way to do it. So that's another cool idea that you can add. And again, all of these ideas are integrated into this advanced performance that I just played.